Welcome back. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at angles of elevation and depression. Angles of elevation and depression are special, but why? Angles of elevation and depression are two special types of angles related to lines of sight. Angles of elevation and angles of depression. Here's two volunteers to demonstrate. Both angles lie between a horizontal line and an observer's line of sight. All right, our first volunteer is going to demonstrate angles of elevation, which we can see are from the horizontal up. So a horizontal line, up, there's an angle of elevation. Angles of depression, however, are from the horizontal down, just like that. Now these volunteers are a little bit scary. I think we should change them. There we go. Mm, that's much better. To remember these, look at depression, D for down, and elevation, E for up. It's so much easier to remember that way, E for up. Take a moment to copy that down. Horizontal versus horizontal. Oh, hey Ernie. Wait, isn't horizontal parallel with horizontal? Yes, it is Ernie, and I like where you're going with that. If we look at two horizontal lines, and we look at the angles of elevation, and the angles of depression, they actually form the Z shape. And we know from our study of transversals and parallel lines that a Z shape means that the angles are called alternate angles. And we know that alternate angles are equal. So that means that we can say that angles of depression are equal to angles of elevation because they're alternate angles. Take a moment to copy that down. So what's the deal then? Let's look at some steps. Let's look at an example and work our way through it, following some steps. First step is to read the question carefully. The angle of elevation to the top of a building is 32 degrees. If the observer is 18 metres away from the base of the building, find the height of the building. Alright, we've read it. We've understood it. Draw a diagram. And usually we are going to end up with a right angle triangle, but we'll start by drawing a building. Now you can draw any building you like as you progress you may just end up drawing a triangle but at the start you might like to draw a pretty building. I've just chosen one at random. And we're putting our right angled triangle on the building. We're going to label all the important information and we're going to include a variable. That might be an angle sometimes or it might be a side. It just depends on the question and the wording of the question. So let's read through the question and see what we need to put on. The angle of elevation to the top of a building is 32 degrees, so we know that angles of elevation are from the horizontal up. So we're going to move our angle into that position from horizontal up. And the observer is 18 metres away from the base of the building, and we're being asked to find the height of the building. So that's where our variable is going to come in as x. Then we're going to find the missing side or angle, as per normal. In this case, we have a side, so we're going to find x. We use our steps, and hopefully these are now fully automatic. And we can see here we've got tan. Substitute known information, solve it, and we get x as being 11.25 metres. Make sure we answer the question. So the question says, find the height of the building. So we should make a statement. Therefore, the building is 11.25 metres tall. All right, take a moment to copy that down. Let's look at some examples. Example one, the angle of depression from the top of a cliff out to a boat is 19 degrees 45 minutes. If the boat is 200 metres out to sea, how tall is the cliff? So our steps required us to have a picture. Here's a picture of a cliff. And our questions also require us to have a boat. Here's a boat. Now we know that we're going to end up with a triangle. So we're going to have the height of the cliff and we're going to have the distance out to the boat as well as back to the cliff. And in this case, we need a horizontal line, which I've done in red. We need that up there because it says the angle of depression. And we remember that angle of depression means from the horizontal down. So that's the position that 19 degrees 45 is going to take. We know that the boat is 200 metres out to sea. 
and we're being asked how tall the cliff is, so that can be our x. Our next step is we're going to move the 19 degrees 45 into the elevation position. We know it's the same. And that just makes it easier because the x and the 200 are part of that triangle. So we need to make our 19 degrees 45 part of that triangle. Then we follow our steps. Hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent, looking at opposite and adjacent, which is 10. And substituting our information, solving this equation, and we get 71.81 metres. So therefore, the cliff is 71.81 metres tall. Now, that's one way we could do it. There are a few ways you can do these questions. The other way, if we look at it a different way, we can look at the angle inside the triangle that's next to the angle of depression. We know that that's 70 degrees 15 because it's a right angle between the cliff and the horizontal line. So 90 minus 19 degrees 45 minutes gives us 70 degrees 15 minutes. So then from there, we can do opposite and adjacent. And this question is still going to be 10. If we solve this in this method, we end up with a pronoun on the bottom, which in the previous videos we've seen how to do that. We need to switch the tan 70 for 15 degrees and the x. So we get x equals 200 divided by tan 70 degrees 15 minutes. If we type that on the calculator, we still get 71.81 metres. So therefore, the cliff is still 71.81 metres tall. All right, there are both methods that we did, and we've got to come up with the same answer in both methods. So take a moment to copy that down. Example two, a man is skydiving. He calculates his altitude as 1,000 meters and he's 800 meters west of his landing site. Find the angle of depression to the nearest degree to his landing site. So part of our diagram is already drawn, stick man and his landing site. If we complete it by drawing a right angle triangle, we've included our red horizontal line again because we're dealing with the angle of depression, which is outside the triangle. Stickman's altitude is 1,000 metres and he's 800 metres west of his landing site. The angle, again, angle of depression outside the triangle from the horizontal down. The first method we're going to look at solving this question involves us translating that angle to the elevation position. From here, we can follow our steps that we've been taking to calculate the angle. We can see we end up with opposite and adjacent opposite being 1,000 and adjacent being 800. The second method involves creating a second triangle on top of the blue triangle. We're going to create a red triangle. Here we can see that the red triangle will be 1,000 metres tall as well. That's Stickman's altitude. And he's still 800 metres west of his landing site. From here, if we label, we can see the opposite is still 1,000 and that adjacent is still 800. In both triangles, we end up with tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. In both triangles, we end up with tan theta equals 1,000 over 800. So you can see it doesn't matter which triangle we use in this case. To find an angle, we do tan inverse of 1,000 over 800, and we get 51.34019175, which as an angle is 51 degrees, 20 minutes, 24.69 seconds. The question is asking to the nearest degree, however, so it's 51 degrees. We always make sure we answer the question. Therefore, the angle of depression is 51 degrees. Take a moment to copy that down. So in today's lesson, we've looked at angles of elevation and depression. We've seen that most of the questions are tan, and, and that's true for most cases. There are occasions where it is sine and cos, but in most cases, we are looking at tan. 